Everybody, it's Chris from Prepare Mind 101 out in the woods again. I'll be doing some different stuff this week. If the weather gods cooperate, I'll be doing that bow video this week because I know a lot of people have been asking about that. So that's a pretty big freaking giveaway. But we've got to get back to business. So I've you've heard me say Smoky Mountain Knife works a lot this month, but I've only actually done one video. The rest was giveaway stuff. And wouldn't you know it, it's time to do another one. At some point, I need to start keeping some knives. Just because. Although I did keep that, I did keep that, uh, that tops little bugger, which, <laughs> there's some interesting comments about what bugger means in different places. But that's beside the point. So today we are going to look at the promised Les Stroud knife from Heli. The, I'm sorry, it's not called the, the Joe or something simple. It is the Temagami. Temagami, I always mess that up. It's right up there with, you know, te Tamagotchi or te Tepi, whatever that tops one is. These words are not easy. You might think they are, but when the words are not actually in front of you, it creates problems. So <laughs> this is one of the more robust heli knives. It's actually, Tang always goes all the way to the back. So it's a little bit more suited for bushcraft. Obviously, if Les Stroud designed it and had it made, it's going to hold up. So we're going to take a look at this fancy looking thing give it a first run through I'm not gonna beat it up too bad because it's not my knife it's one of yours so if you want to find out more and possibly get some less Stroud goodness don't go away All right, let's go ahead and run through the specs real quick. So the brand is Heli. The blade length on this is 4.375 inches and it has a blade thickness of 0.125. It is a satin uh, finish, triple laminated. The steel is Sandvik 12C27 stainless. So I've always been very impressed uh, with Sandvik steel. Had a couple different knives that, that used it and I can't get this thing to sit still. So now I'm wishing like I hadn't even picked it up. There we go. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's gonna be a good outdoor knife steel uh, with the triple laminated and stainless. I'm not going to be sweating rust all that much. Plain edge, scanty ground. Uh, country of origin is in Norway. And once again, California strikes. Prop 65. This knife can expose you to chemicals, including formaldehyde. Is California on crack? That's a serious question. Because every time I see this stuff, I'm like, what? What is going on there? Anyway. So, <laughs> full tang, leather sheath. Uh, the sheath, simple leather sheath. But it does, it's not too big and unobtrusive. Fits nice. Handles get, for this style of sheath, the handles got about as much hanging out as I prefer. So that is good. Now this is a full tang, but what's interesting, I don't know if I can find a picture of this uh, blade without the handles. See, most of the heli knives that I looked at, uh, the tang only goes back, you know, it's like a partial tang. It goes back to about here. This one does go all the way back, but not necessarily all the way down. But still, it goes all the way to the back, so it is a full tang. 
and you can kind of see why uh, with the handles because the handles it looks like it's probably I'm a go I'm, I'm making assumptions I'm analyzing here on the fly I'm sure it's uh, cut out in a machine cut a slot in there because down here there's no seam there's no exposed tang which means there's no friction there's no hot spots it's going to be very comfortable uh, able to work with this for a good long time and talking about the handle yeah it is some handles are a little too small some are too big this one is for this style of knife it seems a little bit big but big in a good way like well and I've got small hands so it may not even feel like that that to you but it's just the right size and width and thickness that you would be able to work with this for a good long time without having any kind of hand fatigue so nice shiny blade got less signature on the back all right so the big question is how's a feather stick so at least nowadays I try I really do try not to cut any live stuff I don't actually need to so I'm going to use some stuff that was left out here because apparently someone else found my little hidey hole and has been hanging out here having campfires and stuff it's nothing sacred so I just want to see I'm not even going to use a baton so technically it's not batoning if there's no baton it's not batoning But, I want a baton. <laughs> I thought I might actually pull that off, but... Get a little light baton. And when I mean light, I mean it's light. And I'm going through a knot. <laughs> job done definitely take some nice big wow this is a... <laughs> this is an extremely slicey knife what kind of witchcraft is this huh kind of like over slice there because I got excited I'm like wow that feels pretty good because the question that ever is going to be on everybody's mind is, well, this is a $180 knife. Obviously, Heli makes good stuff. And if this is less Strouds, you know, more premium knife, must do something right, correct? But what a lot of people kind of jump to in their minds is, once you get above a certain price point, you start thinking super steels. But as much as I am pro super steel, it doesn't mean that there aren't other really good steels out there. And the Sandvik steels are definitely one of them. It's really easy to want to dig down deep with this knife. Making my feathers a little bit on the on the thick side, but man, this thing's. Are you seeing this? I'm, I'm not just full of it. I mean, it's really good at removing material. Like unnaturally good. Like if you're gonna make stuff, craft some bushes. You definitely won't be disappointed here. I need a flat spot. But I will settle for flat-ish. Sometimes flat-ish. Every new knife, you gotta find that sweet spot angle 
with the grind. Because the way that I usually hold the knife, it's very easy to go deep. And with this one, I have to kind of angle back a little bit. to get that fine feather. So it is something that would take a little adjustment as most new knives do, but the edge, the way that it feels, and I don't know if it has anything at all to do with the whole triple laminated thing that's making it go through this wood like freaking Teflon, just speculating here. But it is really smooth on wood. I want to just dig deeper and do some, just make sharp sticks. <laughs> so make sharp sticks all day. But and again, this is first time use. First impressions, those are, those are what I like. So this thing feathers nice, it, it digs deep, the edge is just absolutely screaming sharp. I'm going to assume that because this is a survival guy's knife, although <laughs> maybe I shouldn't assume, it kind of felt like it was sharp. Uh, but maybe that's that that laminated stuff. But it's less Stroud. He can like rub acorns together and get fire. So that's an ixnay on the ferro rod. But luckily there are hundreds of woodsmen out there who have been going out in the woods for 30 years and they have all got a bick so I'll just find one of them <laughs> and say hey bro can borrow your lighter wow well, I'd say the shining star of this design thus far is the, the comfort in the handle Whatever they've got this coated with, it's just helping it slide so easy in that edge. So I just want to dig down and take some material off. It's been a couple years since I used the whole beaver on meth descriptor. But this may very well qualify for that metaphor. <laughs> Jeez, this thing is a wood hog. Alright, gotta, gotta hit pause on the Les Stroud knife because I just made feathers and if I don't see fire I'm going to be severely disappointed. There, now, now that itch has been scratched, we will return to our regularly scheduled program. I wanted to just kind of get a feel for this. Doing some simple notching, which based on the way it was slicing, feels really good. So this is definitely a wood crafting knife. Now let me just be perfectly 
honest. I mean, this isn't my style of knife. It's not, it's not something that I get excited about because I like it and that I want it. But I'm excited about how it feels in actual use. It's kind of, kind of a weird thing. It's like there's stuff I like better, but I can't argue the fact that I enjoy using this. And I'm just trying to do things with not even beating on the knife, but just rocking, pressure cuts. bit smoother if I did actually pound it in a little bit but who can't do that I'm trying to come up with the words to describe what's different about the way that this knife feels when I'm working on the wood. There's definitely something about it. Again, the only thing I can come up with is it's the geometry and that that lamination. Because I don't really have... I can't think of anything. I'm sure I've done something. But the whole laminated steel thing, it's not something that I'm, I'm used to. If you can think of something that I did that had that, let me know so it's not bugging me. Knife stuff, not tool stuff. The thing about geometry and angles and, and steels and all that is it can be something so subtle. A couple degrees maybe on the angle. It, and you can't tell by your eye, but you feel it when you use it so I don't want to beat this up too much since it's a giveaway knife but I could definitely see some less Stroud influence in this just on how this thing performs working with wood without stressing out the hand I wish the spine was sharp because some of us just like our ferro rods but I think that's the trade-off just kind of like it's a trade-off with a tops with a differentially heat tree you get a stronger 1095 because the spine is softer you don't get the you don't get to strike fair rods with it or with a an se in the coating you get you get something you give something up but you know it's not like that's the only way to start a fire either it's just one that a lot of us happen to enjoy it's fun and i think the reason why is not about making the fire it's just another excuse to get our knives out and play with it. I mean, have you ever really thought about that? I think that's what it is. I think knife people just want every opportunity to play with their knife, and the ferro rod gives us one more opportunity. Okay, so one thing I will point out, especially to Mr. New Owner, with uh, this laminated steel stuff, is it's not unlike a powder coating in that you will get rub marks from regular regular use. You can see that it's kind of hard with my view screen, but you know you do get some rub marks from use. But that stuff doesn't bother me the way that it used to back in the day. If you get them, you get them. But this is what I would call a user knife, not a sit there and stare at it knife. So it'd be interesting uh, to see how these things do in long-term testing. That's just not something I'm going to have an opportunity to do. But if you have one, if you have one of these knives, or a heli knife in general, laminated steel, uh, and you want to share like what your experience has been with it, you know, post a comment in the comments section below because I, I for one, would like to hear it. Uh, this is actually the first heli knife I've ever put my hands on, I think. 
it's, it's certainly the the one I've ever put first one I've ever put to wood but it's definitely pretty impressive wood crafting knife so that is the heli Tema <laughs> Tema Temagami. I'm sorry I just th those words So in a nutshell, performance wise, no complaints. I mean, this thing slices through wood better than a good percentage of knives that I have reviewed. I mean, it's just like made for it. Is it my personal tastes and style? No. Does it freaking work? Heck yeah, it works. So my tastes do not determine what everybody else out there likes. But if you would like to get yourself a free Les Stroud heli knife, courtesy of Smoky Mountain Knife Works, all you gotta do is leave a comment in the comment section below. And because it is what it is, let's change it up a little bit. I wanna make you think, not just say Jessica and think you get a, a freaking, we gotta kill that one. I mean, that's just old. But uh, tell me what you thought was like one of the coolest moments or things that Les Stroud has done in one of his TV shows. Including, you know, didn't he go looking for Bigfoot once? I swear I saw that. And I also saw him in this uh, documentary called, I think it was called Missing 411. That's some creepy stuff. So if you haven't looked into that, check that out. But Les Stroud is in that too. Um, other than that, links to this knife on Smoky Mountain Knife Works, which will be on my landing page, are gonna be in the description box below. And later this week, we will get to that Atmos bow, checking out the new updates and then do the giveaway for that. And I've got a couple other new things that aren't knives, but here's hoping to get some more knives. Um, <clears throat> trying to think if I have anything else currently from the current Smoky Mountain Knife Works stock. Yes, I do. I do. One of the new Condors. Uh, it's like, I don't remember if it's the big one or the little one, but one of the new uh, Condor Pucos looks pretty nice. So then we'll be getting some new Smoky Mountain Knife Works stuff to check out. All right, guys, Chris and Prepare My 101. Thanks for watching. Be sure to click like, share, and subscribe. All those handy dandy links are in the description box below. I'll be back with another video here soon, so see you then.